Millet, 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 Millet. So as, um, you know, everybody, everybody keeps comparing Millet or has been since he got elected to Trump and to, uh, and to Bolsonaro and so on. He's a populist, he's this and that. But, but the reality is that he's the opposite of Trump. Millet actually stands for something. He believes in something. He, 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 I may not agree with everything he says, but he seems like an honest player. He seems like somebody who really believes in stuff. Now, you know, he's a politician as well. And in order to uh, get the stuff that he believes in passed, he's going to have to make some compromises with other things. But generally, Millet is, is, is somebody who is driving towards greater freedom. That is the thrust of his administration, or at least I think his personal beliefs. And again, even though I, I disagree with him on things like abortion. Uh, just as the United States, our presidential candidates are competing on who's going to raise more taxes, on who's going to restrict our freedom more, on who's going to take away more of our liberties. Uh, Millet is liberating the Argentinians slowly, systematically, you know, moving them closer to freedom. Closer. I mean, it's still going to be far from, but closer. So, for example, as Donald Trump threatens to raise tariffs across the board from all countries to somewhere between 10 to 20 percent and 60 percent on Chinese goods, Millet has just announced, uh, has just implemented a dramatic reduction in tariffs uh, from, uh, from 17.5% to 7.5%. Uh, now, when he came into office, he did increase tariffs for a short period of time, basically to raise revenue. But tariffs are bad, he knows it, and he's lowering them now by more than 50%, from 17.5% to 7.5%. Um, and um, it's, uh, you know, it's an, it, it, you know it's, it's an attempt to lower prices. Low prices will come down. It's an attempt to improve the quality of life and standard of living of, of the Tinians. It's a way by which you can, um, uh, you can increase... Um, uh, you're increasing the freedom of Argentinians to trade with who they want. Uh, the, I, the, I guess this uh, the intention is supposedly to lower this tax, this tariff, to zero. Right? Um, but that they're doing this in stages so that the economy can adapt, I guess. But so far, 175 to 7.5%, this is great news. On the inflation front, by the way, um, inflation has gone from reaching 26% a month, 26% a month, um, after he, he devalued the currency in December, so it shot up to 26%. It's come down to 4%, which it hasn't been this low in a few years, in two or three years, and heading downwards. That is, the direction um, is down um, and... Um, You know, the, 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 uh, the, the idea here is that over time, as government spending is shrinking, the, the, you know, the, the um, budget is stable, and the central bank is not printing new pesos, at least that's the intention, that inflation will come down even further. So what he's doing is working, um, cutting... Uh, cutting um, uh, imp cutting these uh, import taxes, tariffs, is going to improve the, the standard of living of Argentinians. Uh, and um, that is good. And we will see, we will see how these things have developed. So far, so good. Things have moved in the right direction. Congress has allowed him to do some of what he wanted, not everything. He is buying time until 2026 when there are elections again in Argentina for the parliament. And he hopes that he can gain some kind of working majority so that he can pass the rest of his agenda. Uh, but in the meantime, he's slowly moving to implement uh, the things that he would like to implement. Ultimately, what he wants, ultimately what I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the people 
who are, who are lending money to, to Argentina want to see is the lifting of all capital controls. That is, they, right now, it's, it, you know, there are all kinds of capital controls on how many dollars you can buy. And of course, the government sets an exchange rate, which is not the same as the black market rate. And all of that needs to go. I mean, the, the, the Argentinian currency has to float and it has to be completely tradable and you should be able to move money in and out of Argentina freely. And that is the goal. And the faster they get to that goal, the better off they're going to be. Uh, and um, hopefully he can get there sooner rather than later. And, uh, you know, really, once that happens and investments start flowing into Argentina, that has to happen really for investment to flow in. Because one of the problems you have with capital controls is you might be able to invest in Argentina, but you can't get your money out. You want to have confidence you can get your money out as well. So capital controls have to go. Uh, I think they will, uh, but it's a question of time and it's a question of when. So far, Mille is doing most of what he promised. Um, I don't know if he's doing it faster or slower than expected. Uh, it's hard to tell. And remember, he's fighting a political machine that you know is trying to do the opposite of what he's doing. For example, I think it was yesterday, the Argentinian parliament passed a... Um, a uh, increase in the amount of money paid out to pensions, right? So increased government spending, and this is just increased government spending as consumption, to, to, not as an investment, right? Not, not building infrastructure, anything like that, which they shouldn't be doing anyway, but this is just pensions. And, you know, this is coming to Millet's desk. He's going to have to veto it. But this is the kind of atmosphere he's fighting against in the demonstrations in the street, all for the increase in pensions. Of course, the unions love this, uh, you know, given the, the, the opposition that he faces, I'd say he's probably doing the best one could expect. Following Millet, continue to follow Millet with interest and um, with support. Hopefully this experiment goes well.